Happy Saturday, guys. Hope everyone's having a great day. Today, let's talk a little bit about the new defiance fund called USOY. It just started trading yesterday. There's not a lot of information out on it, but I kind of wanted to take a first little look at it and see, see, what, uh, see what's going on with it. Okay, so the symbol is USOY. Uh, what this is, is it's a covered call fund that trades oil. Oil is the underlying, basically. So it says USOI is an actively managed ETF that sinks income while maintaining the opportunity for indirect exposure to the share price of the United States oil fund, USO. USOI aims to generate additional income from its options, options investments when USO's share price rises in value based on spe the specific put option sold. USOI uses... Uh, at the money or in the money put options. I just said it was a covered call fund. Well, I'm sorry. An in the money put uh, strategy and in the money short put strategy is, is the same thing as a covered call fund. And a lot of people refer to all these types of funds generically as covered call funds. Um, but it, it, technically it's a, it's a short put fund. So anyway, they do a cash secure put just like NDX or just like the triple QI does on the NDX or JEPY does on the SPX. Okay, so they they sell the in the money put to provide income and exposure to the price of USO. The fund's option contracts provide current income from the premium it receives from the sale of the option contracts. Usually that's the part that makes up the dividend, the premium they bring in from selling the options. If they are able to capture any upside, which is what they keep talking about, having indirect exposure to the to the uh, outcome of USO, uh, that that usually manifest in the price of the nav but basically they take the premium they're able to earn from the puts they sell and pay it out as a dividend every month so i think this fund will be similar to the other ones in construction in addition the funds in the money put option may provide upside appreciation known as intrinsic value at least once a week the fund will sell put options are priced either at the money or up to five percent in the money Okay, so this this was kind of advertised, I thought, as a daily. When I first started hearing about this fund, they were saying it was going to be the first daily uh, option commodity fund or something like that. Well, anyway, if you look over here at Old Tasty Trade, I already have a trade loaded up to show you guys. But if you look over here at Tasty Trade, it appears like at this point in time, they have Wednesday and Friday expirations. I think they are going to everyday expirations. But for right now, they're probably they're going to sell Wednesday and Friday options because they have to. So uh, yesterday they sold a Friday option. We'll take a look at that in a second. That option expired at the end of the day yesterday is a full profit expired worthless. So I'm thinking uh, that they're going to probably go to the Wednesday option. And I was looking at some of the different options and trying to figure out which one they might sell. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, All right, so here's what they did yesterday. Here's a chart of the USO, and they trade options on the USO. They sold this 76 and a half strike call option. And that's why I put the profit box. The top of the profit box is right at 76 and a half. Because 76 and a half, anytime you sell an option, the strike price is the ma is the point where max profit occurs. So if the market would have finished at the strike price or above the fund, not USO, but the fund we're talking about, USOY would have had a max profit for the day. As it was, USOI lost a little bit of NAV value because USO's NAV came down, but they did bring in a uh, premium. This was a 38 cent option and they sold it 328 times. So whatever $38 times 328 is, it's like 12,000 bucks. That's what they brought in for the day. That was the, uh, that was the income, and at the end of the month, they'll add up all those amounts and uh, and pay it out as a dividend. All right, so um, there's another fund out there that's similar to this one. It's called USOI. Now, it, it does the same thing. It's a covered call strategy, but it does it in the monthly options. This has been out since 2017, and it pays it pays pretty nice dividends. And if you look, if you look at this, I compared USOI. It's a Credit Suisse fund. 
I compared it with um, with USO. And just like all covered call funds, I always check this to make sure it's true. But but uh, in 2020, when the global recession hit, oil prices uh, took a dive. They crashed. So the price of USO, which is this oil ETF, also crashed. Um, but and so the price of USOI, which is this covered call, Credit Suisse covered call uh, ETF, also crashed. But you can see that uh, you can see while USO lost 80 percent of its value, literally dropped from 10,000 to 2000 in value. The uh, the covered call strategy dropped from 10,000 to like about 3200. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a lot. It's still a big loss, but that's that's the cushion. That's the buffer. That's why I always say these things have have buffer. Although this chart down here, the uh, the bottom chart is also a perfect visual illustration of the kind of the way covered call strategies work. When you have a sharp decline, they perform better so that, you know, the underlying outperforms on the way down, but the underlying also outperforms on the way up. That's kind of the trade off. And you can see you can see the underlying outperforming on the way up, although you can see the fund USOI still catching some upside. OK, there's a big difference between monthly options and daily options. So uh, even though these are the same strategies and, and everything with the daily options, we're going to have, we're going to have different dynamics. We're going to get a lot more buffer in my opinion. And these may not be true daily options at first, cause they're just, they just sell them Wednesday and Friday, but they may, they may sell a Wednesday option. And then, uh, and then at the end of the day, Monday cover it and then sell another Wednesday option, a different one. And then at the end of the day, Tuesday, cover that. So they're just biting off one chunk, one day at a time worth of time premium. That's what they do sometimes on IWMY. Um, there's one day of the month where they have morning expiration. So the indexes will sometimes write funds on Thursday that last till Monday. Okay. And even though it's a two day option, they'll close the option Friday for whatever it's worth and then write another option a different option uh, for Monday. And I suspect that's what these guys will do. These guys will kind of do a synthetic daily option is my expectation, but I'm going to watch it and we'll, you know, we're going to be talking about it a bunch. So I wanted to mention it's going to be on my report every day. Um, and it's going to be right under IWMY. You can see, um, you can see yesterday, uh, well, I don't have the whole line filled out, but the first two lines are filled out. You could see yesterday that USOI underperformed the benchmark um, because the red's in their column. But uh, that's the bad news. But the rest of the defiance funds, four out of uh, four out of the six of them, outperformed the benchmark. And in any event, you'll you'll be able to start seeing this uh, the USOI results on this line. It'll have the strike price they sold. Um, which was 76 and a half I'm a math problem right there. I need to somehow get the rounding out, but in any event, I'll fix all this, but on a daily basis, if you have this fund, you're going to be able to, we're going to be able to see the current profit loss for the month earnings per share for the month. And guess what? We'll also, I'll also be making a dividend estimate. So uh, it ought to be fun. We'll uh, it ought to be fun to see how this thing does. Um, I tried to, I looked at tasty trade. Okay, so let, let's go back to Tasty Trade. I tried to project a, I tried to project a uh, dividend. Don't hold me to this, but I'm going to say 45. percent That's I, I looked into that yesterday, and that's uh, I mean, that, we just have one day's worth of results to go off of. So I'm looking at that one day, and I'm trying to, you know, see if that's fair, and try to put it over a longer time frame and think about what it'd be, but. I'm thinking 45%, um, you know. Okay, so here's what I was going to show you. <clears throat> so the Friday option, they sold the 76 and a half, and it was the 65 Delta when they sold it. Now, the 65 Delta is the same. It's the same option they sell that the NDX sell or the triple QI sells for the NDX. The JEPY also sells the 65 Delta option. That is, uh, that's usually one or two strikes in the money. Um, and it depends. But so if we go out to the 15th, they have, I looked at the website and they haven't posted their trade yet. So I don't know what they traded, but I'm going to predict it. They could either go for Wednesday for the 76 or. 
the, but the 76 is the 65 Delta. That's the one they like to pick. So I'm going to say they sell that one. So I went ahead and loaded that up. If they sell that 328 times, um, okay, you can see all the you can see all the statistics down here. Um, max profit on the trade is 35,000. Max loss is two and a half million, which is what the fund is worth. That's the way these funds work. Work all of these funds they sell the puts that amount to 100 percent of the notional. So if if any of these underlines go to zero in one day. These ETFs will also go to zero. That that's the way they're, they're designed. Um, they can't lose more. You can't lose more than that. And they just they add up whatever their assets are and sell the equivalent amount of puts every day. So, 328 puts at this level on this day equals about two and a half million of notional value. That's that's the equivalent amount of stock if you converted the puts to stock. That's the, that's the amount of uh, stock they represent. So I, I would imagine they sell the 76 put for uh, for Wednesday. Anyway, as soon as that comes out, I'll have a Sunday night update. We'll profit boxes and the new profit box will be wherever it, whenever I find out which one they sell, I'll draw the new profit box and we'll talk about all that stuff Sunday night. All right, guys, I think this fund ought to be uh, interesting. Here's another one other thing I wanted to say. Here's the reason that I'm particularly interested in it. I'm interested in all covered call funds because I, I like the idea of selling option premium, as I've talked about a million times. So, you know, covered calls, they sell option premium. So in a general sense, yeah, OK, I like them all. But I really like diversification. And lately, there's been a thousand covered call funds come out that the underlines the same thing. Basically, the underlines tech stocks or NASDAQ, which is great because those are doing great. But, you know, there's FEPI, there's Triple QI, there's JEPQ, there's a jillion of them. And they're all following the same 10 or 15 stocks or maybe the same six or seven stocks. Basically, when I mean, in the grand scheme of things, basically, they're, you know, so uh, that's a problem when it comes to diversification. So I pulled up a correlation chart here. Um, all right. So the correlation chart, every so when you're studying correlation, uh, the correlation, the spy equals one or 100. So they measure stuff as it correlates to the spy. So in the next column, here's gold. Well, gold has a correlation of 0.10. That just means that it does have a positive correlation, but a very weak one, only a 10% correlation. You know, now USO, on the other hand, is a little stronger correlation to spy but not very much. It it's a positive correlation. So it means it generally goes the same way, but it's only a 38% correlation. Well, um, then you can look at negatively correlated things and those are bonds. And that's why I like TRESS or that's the, that's the cool thing about these funds that these covered call funds that use different underlines, especially bonds, gold, and oil. There's a gold one coming out that Defiance is going to release. That's why I pulled it up. The bonds, gold, and oil, give you diversification now the lower the number and the and if it's negative but but a lower positive number and any negative number those are a diversification uh that's that's your that's a diversification tool the low numbers are will can get you there now just for just for illustration purposes i wanted to show how it works so if something was like the opposite of spy perfectly inversely correlated, it would be a negative 100 or negative 1, 1.0 or whatever. Well, anyway, I brought up the ultra share, the pro shares, ultra short, triple Q, just to show you guys, because that's pretty darn negatively correlated. You know, when the market goes down, that thing goes up. Anyway, it has a negative 87. But I'm excited, like I say, if you can, if you in a perfect world, is my dream world would be to have, let's say, 10 covered call funds. And have the cover call own the cover call funds. I'd probably have FEPI and Triple QI and and JEPQ maybe. And then I would have you know probably K Web and and or not K Web Clip and um, and USOI, the one we just talked about, the Credit Suisse one, and maybe some USO as well, and some and also some TLTW, which is a bond covered call fund and also some maybe some TRES and own all of those funds in the right proportion that they cancel each other out as far as the NAV movement goes. This would be my dream where, where you, you could have a bunch of covered call funds. I just picked 10 out of the air, but you have a number of covered call funds 
that are in that are not all in the same area that some of them have negative correlations and some of them have low correlations so basically you're own them and be diversified enough where the nav of, of your portfolio wouldn't go up and down too much um but you would still collect the the thing is the premiums when you're doing cover call strategies the bad thing about a cover call strategy is if you have the wrong underline and your underlying crashes um you know you're going to lose your nav will go down on your cover call strategy even though you'll be making nice dividends you'll lose on that so if you could portion and you could get all the premium that's that's my dream that's my dream portfolio is uh it, but right now i don't think you could do that i don't think there's enough inversely it's there's too many covered call funds that are all tied to the same stuff as as more gold and oil and bond and maybe even crypto although crypto is pretty highly related to to bitcoin uh let's i mean cryptos or bitcoin's pretty highly related to spy also let's actually see if we can figure that out what's the um let's do this let's do bito okay well, BIT, okay, so there's an example of a, of a Bitcoin fund. It, it's about halfway correlated. It is positively correlated, but it's a 54%. In any event, I, I would dream of, of, a, of a portfolio that's perfectly diverse where the NAV really can't go up or down too much. If you have and one thing going down, it means the other one's going up and they offset each other. And you can just collect the premium. That's the uncovered calls is you want the premium. The thing you're trying to miss is the, is the NAV erosion or the NAV, you know, the NAV crash. That's it's, the erosion is kind of a misnomer, but but you you don't want exposure to you want to collect the premium without the exposure to the ups and downs of the market. In any event, that's where diversification comes in, and that's the kind of uh, portfolio I'm trying to design. Um, maybe I'll design one of those, and and we'll have a video on it next week. I'll pick a ten fund, ten covered call fund, you know, portfolio, and I'm going to try to make it where the uh, where all the correlations balance out and there and there's you know we'll see if that's even possible that might be a fun project and then and then we'll just see how it does every day we'll follow it against a regular portfolio and we'll track it that's actually a good idea for content i'm going to do that we're going to build a diverse covered call etf the most diverse one we can make a video on it we'll follow it every day and we'll see and we'll see how it works because i mean i'm like you guys i, I love these things i Cashing the checks, but I don't want, I don't like seeing my nav go down, you know, but at the same time, if you, if you have enough of these, sometimes your nav goes up. So, I mean, you know, you, you anyway, uh, I'll stop ranting and raving. I appreciate your support and I appreciate you watching the video. Tell me what you, how you guys are planning on using these things. I'd be interested to hear. We can discuss it in the comments. All right. Take it easy.